Hi everybody, Mr. Peacock here. So today we're actually going to be learning about solids, that's three-dimensional figures like this can right here. So this is geometry. Sparkling water. All right, so let's talk about solid figures. So our first solid figure that we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about four, is the prism. A prism is formed by two parallel congruent polygonal faces called bases, connected by faces that are parallelograms. So in this case, if we look at this one right here, we can see this would be what's called a rectangular prism. Uh, what this also means, though, is that any opposite side is going to be any two opposite sides could be bases because it's rectangular and so all the faces are rectangular but if we were to look at this normally what we would probably notice is that uh, most shapes it, you can tell what the bases are by which ones are not that shape uh, in this case i would probably call the shape that we see on the very top that's the lightest blue and the one that would be opposite that seems to be on the floor most likely the bases but we don't actually see that. Now, it, like I said, it's much easier to tell if you have, say, a pentagonal or a hexagonal uh, prism. So now let's talk about our next shape. Our next shape is almost a prism, and it's, it's going to show this a little bit better because it's called a cylinder. So this is a cylinder right here, and a cylinder is formed by two parallel congruent circular bases and a curved surface that connects the base. So if you look at this, it's basically we have a circle on top, circle on bottom, and just this straight line. So it's basically a circular prism right there. Um, all the formulas, everything else is going to work just like a prism, just with circles instead. So now let's talk about, in this case, our next shape, which is a pyramid. So a pyramid is formed by a polygonal base and triangular faces that meet at a common vertex. So in this case, this would be a rectangular pyramid because the base in this case is actually a rectangle, even though you can't fully see it from here. Um, what you end up getting is uh, all these sides, though, are going to be triangles. So if we've already talked about the pyramid, Let's talk about the circular version of a pyramid, which is a cone, like ice cream cone, or like traffic cone. So a cone is formed by a circular base and a curved surface that connects to the, ba the base to a vertex. So it's, it's basically just a circular pyramid. That's the idea. So now that we've talked about these shapes, Let's talk about one of the ways that we can uh, show them to you, which is called a net. All right, so uh, to show you this, I'm going to, uh, well, use a program called Shapes on my iPad. Uh, on this program, we can kind of look at a few things. So we're going to start with pyramids. On Shapes, you can do pyramids, prisms, uh, solids of revolution, which I, they're just meaning, they're just meaning the circular ones. And then also uh, platonic solids. Uh, these are ones that we'll talk about later. So let's start with a, pier a prism. So I'm going to go instead, well, I'm going to start with um, a quadrilangular or rectangular prism. Uh, so we're going to start with that. And uh, let's look at what the net would look like. So the net is basically what if, imagine this was a box from Amazon and you took it out apart completely, but there was no like overlapping. Let's look at what would happen here. Okay, so this is one way the net could look. I tend to normally draw the, the sides on the same line, but this is basically what a net would look like here uh, for this. But what if I instead had, say, a cube? It's gonna look pretty much the same, I would imagine. Yeah, this is a little closer to how I normally draw these. Looks like a T, upside down T. Ooh, look at this three-dimensionality, so cool. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, what happens if we have a 
hexagonal prism. So this is where we have a hexagon at the top. So you're just going to notice that basically you can see the net is formed by the six. Uh, the net is formed by the six in this case um, rectangular sides, and then the two hexagons on the top. So that's what a net would look like there. Um, so now that we've talked about uh, prisms, let's instead talk about pyramids. So if I had, let's say, a quadrilingular pyramid, if I, if I do this, you know, you're going to guess what this looks like because you might have even opened up like a candy box that looks like this. Oh, that's right. Look at that. And inside, you can see it now kind of looks, it looks kind of cool. But yeah, so that's the big idea of what that ends up looking like. Let's look at what happens if it's a hexagon. So you'll see the big idea is it's basically just the triangles go out from each side. So that's the big way that that ends up looking. But now let's talk about what it looks like when we have a cylinder. Now a cylinder you might actually be able to guess pretty well in terms of what the sides are going to look like because if you've ever had any sort of, let's say, um, well, if you've ever like opened up, say, a can of soup, if you've seen a can of soup in your parents' uh, pantry and you decided, you know, it'll be a hilarious prank if I take off the label. Don't do this. I want to stress so that no parents get mad at me, but do it. Um, so if you take the labels off, you know what the label looks like. Once again, do not actually take the label off, but the label just becomes a, a rectangle. And the length of that rectangle, in this case, or the width, or whatever we want to call it, is the circumference of the circles that are the bases. So that's what a net would look like on a cylinder. On a cone, it ends up looking kind of like a certain amount of a circle, and the amount of circle that it actually is, is based off of the lateral height, as it were. Because... Um, the amount of space that the line that goes around the part of the circle, the arc length as it were, is going to be the circumference of the old shape. So the shorter that you have your radius, which would be the lateral height or the height from the uh, edge to the tip, uh, the more of the circle you would end up having there. And so that's the idea on this. So you probably know what this kind of looks like if you've ever uh, opened up, say, a drumstick. I don't mean like the type that you would like play drums with. I mean the type that has ice cream and is delicious. Now this next part we're going to be talking about the way that you can represent 3D figures and in particular isometric views. So isometric views are basically where instead of being like head on like this, it's more at an angle where you can suddenly start to see some depth. Uh, you see this in a lot of video games. Qbert, you see it in games like Super Mario RPG, games like SimCity 2000, and many, many others. But let's talk about how we would draw them. Let's talk about how this would work if we were talking about just, well, graphing. This is what's called an isometric grid. Um, and the, it's just a connect the dots. It's very fun. I enjoy drawing on this type of grid paper. Some of you might as well. But let's look at what it would look like if we tried to draw this shape in an isometric grid. So I've even added some colors to go with this one. A uh, couple of things to note. First off, that green barely shows up because the green uh, cube is mostly covered up by the, uh, in this case, blue cube. The other thing I want to point out is if I was to look at the, the blue cube and the uh, yellow cube in the back, they are pretty much the exact same size. And you might be like, well, those are close. But also, if I was to draw a cube that would be even further back, it doesn't change. With isometric, the size of things doesn't change. We just add dimension by, well, drawing it this way. So things do not get bigger or smaller as they move about the screen or anything like that. So if we want things to get bigger or smaller as they go further back, we need to actually draw something with what's called perspective. So first we're going to talk about one point perspective. Uh, but for any perspective, we need to have a line. And this line is what we call the horizon. 
Uh, and obviously, if this is one point perspective, as you might guess, we also need a point. And we actually have a name for this point. It is the vanishing point right there. Now, from there, we're going to draw some guidelines. Uh, these guidelines are just going to help me uh, draw the shape better. And then I just start to draw. So what I do is I like to draw my vertical lines first and then kind of just do my horizontal lines and create, basically connect the four vertical lines that I drew once I'm done. So I start with my vertical lines right here and I'm just going to connect them now. So you can see, boom, 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 boom. So this is how you do one point perspective. I want you to notice something here. Notice that the front and back are pretty much facing directly towards the camera. They are just perfect little rectangles right there. That's right. And that happens whenever you're dealing with one point perspective. And this is what it looks like if you're doing that. Um, this would be something that you might want to use if you had, say, a road that you were drawing or something like that. But what if you wanted to draw two roads diverging at a, at a path? Well, we're not going to do that, but what if we wanted to not just use one point of perspective? Could we draw with more than one? Sure, we call that two-point perspective. So to do this, we need a, well, second point. Here we are. Here's our second point, and let's just uh, draw these out. Boom, 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 boom. There's our lines, and then I do my vertical lines again from there and just connect the dots exactly like before but I want you to notice now none of the sides are just like perfect rectangles or squared because they're all coming out from a different perspective and that's going to really affect things so that's how you do two point perspective now that we've talked about that what if instead of just wanting to draw something in 3d we wanted to graph it in 3d is there some sort of third dimensional version of the graph of the coordinate plane could we be doing the coordinate plane in 3D? 3D? Okay, so this is the coordinate plane in three dimensions. What this basically means is we now have an X, a Y, but also this Z coordinate. And so if I wanted to have a point, I would say something like 1, 2. That's how I traditionally have done that. And if you look, there is a point now at 1, 2. And I could move this around, and you would see that it still is exactly where it was before. 1, 2. This is what that would normally look like. But we are adding a third dimension. So if I add a third point, 1, 2, 3, as it were, oh no. That was not a comma, that was a period. So one, two, three. What I want to show you is, as I move this around, look. Oh, it's now in the middle of the air. So if I go right here, it still looks like one, two. But you can now see that it is three up. And so that's the idea. So we have the x, y, and the z coordinate. And that's going to be important if you ever want to try to graph in 3D. But for our purposes, let's talk about some of the formulas. All right, so now that we've learned about the x, y, and now z coordinate, uh, let's talk about how that changes certain things, because it changes two of our formulas that we've been using all year. The first one is distance formula. Now, you might remember distance formula as the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, but distance formula in 3D adds a third point, the z. So it just is pretty much the exact same. We just add z2 minus z1 squared, and we square root all three instead of just two. Now let's talk about midpoint. You might remember the midpoint was uh, x2 plus x1, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Well, as you might guess, we have a third point, so we just add z1 plus z2 divided by 2. And that's it for the, our formulas. And you can use all of these to find things in 3D and all that. But the biggest thing that I need for all of you to do, more so than even finding things in 3D, is if you haven't yet, I need you to like and subscribe. Even if you have liked and subscribed, you can comment. 
you can say, whoa, this is the greatest math ever. I hated math until today. Or you can say things that are, are true, like it's not great math. But, you know, anything, just like, subscribe, you know, comment, all that jazz. Don't, like, be a bot who just comments something and is immediately, like, flagged by YouTube because it's, like, a link to a sketchy site or something. Don't be that. But, you know, comment in a good way. All right, and with that, thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day. This was, and always will be, Geometry.